Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, let's try to understand what is the use as well as need for the concept of arrays. So let's take some input. So let's take the input 5. Now I want to read 5 values. I'll just take some random 5 values. 18, 4, 8, 1, 9. So what I want to do is I want to add all these 5 values. So, so that we just get the output to be. So let's say 9 plus 1 is 10 plus 8, 18, 22, plus 8, let's go for 30 and 40. So 40 would be the sum for this. So how would you do? Here if you observe, I'm reading 5 values. If you want to read one single value, what would you do? I'll just go for int number. You scan this respect to value, percentile D, address of number. Right. But you want to do the same step how many number of times? 5 times. Means definitely we need something called the concept of loop. So let's go for the loop. But here, which loop you want to choose? Here if you know the number of times exactly what you are supposed to do, let's go for the concept of for loop. So for int i equals 1, you want to go it exactly 5 times, i increased by 1. See i plus plus also works, i plus equals to 1 also works, shorthand assignment operator, yeah. So this is where you have the loop, cool. So now here this loop runs 5 times so that your number is scanned 5 times and you are storing the number. So now what you want to do, you want to add all these values. So now here I will be just taking some variable called sum, int sum to 0. Initially the value of sum is 0. So if you scan the first value, 0 plus 18 that would be the sum. Next if you go get the value of 4, so 18 plus 4 the value should be 22 plus so on. So we are supposed to do in this way. So in that case, I want this respect to some value so to be initialized before the loop. Means int sum equal to 0 over here. So let's each and every time try to add the value of your number. So let's go now add the value of number. Sum plus equals to number. Okay. So when you want to print the value 40, is it after 18? Is it after 4? Is it after 8? No. Is it after everything, right? So after everything, you want to print the value 40. Means once your entire for loop is completed, so you need to print the value 40. So just go for printf percent ld go with the value of sum. So this is the logic what we went. So let's try to quickly do this in online compiler. For int i equals 1 i less than or equals to 5, i increased by 1. Okay, so let's go take one number, scan of percent ld, address of number, and you want to add each and every time the value of this. So before that, go just take variable called sum initialized to 0, sum plus equals to number. So at last, once your loop is done, go print of percent ld, the value of sum. So just, let's go run it. So we took the value 18, 4, maybe next 8, 1, 9. So we got the value 40. But I want to do this for the number of times, not only 5 times fixed. So in that case, I'll scan something called size. So go take scan of percentile D, address of size. So now whatever the size value we have, I want to make sure that it runs that number of times. So instead, wherever you're having the value 5, you go replace that value size. So I'll just go copy this, take the size 5, so we got the value 40, maybe now if I just go for 6, let's give all this 5, maybe 40 plus 7, that should give us the value 47. So this is very smooth and cool. So we thought to discuss what is arrays, what is the purpose of arrays and now we have seen some question where you find some of the given numbers. But what is the link between these two things? So now let's say here, now let's come back to this and let's understand. Here there are five values. Okay, we know these five values are very small, 18, 4, 8, 1, 9. We can easily remember. But after this entire loop, let's say, after this entire loop, if I ask what is the value of third? What is the third value? So we can't say the value is 8 because do you observe here? int number means whenever you are in the loop only there is something stored for this respect to number and that would be erased once you come after this respective loop. So let's say number you have something like this. 
okay first you took the value 18 okay 18 is over here initially next when you take the value 4 so no matter the value 18 is there over there so 18 is removed you have the value now 4 similarly until 9 but after 9 also if you just observe let's say this loop is completed once this loop is completed you come outside of this this entire number is vanished now if i ask you what is the maximum number what is the smallest number how many times did the number 8 appear can you answer all those things no so if you want to answer all those things you definitely want to store all those respective values as there are five values you definitely need five integer variables means int num1 let's say int num2 so on similarly int num5 but this is for five that is possible but if you want to go scan hundreds of values or one lakh values ten thousands of values how is it practically possible so that is not possible so what if you have only one name for all those things means let's say i have a name called arr so now for this arr i'll try to store everything in only one let's go take all these things 18 4 8 1 9 and let's just simply skip it over here so what if I say that there is something called ARR which keeps track of each and every value with something called indexes. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is said to be called an array. So this is said to be called an array. So now we can say what is an array? It is a collection of similar data types so why would you say that it is a collection of similar data types so why because here you stored everything of integer data type only that's the reason you say array is a collection of similar data types similarly here what did i do i have stored in the array five respective elements means the declaration for that respective thing goes in this respective way int arr of five so this is how you declare the array maybe if i want to hold only characters you go char arr of 5 if you want to hold the marks of the student so go for marks give some 20 student marks so this is the way how you store and the picture of array comes so that is all for this video in the next video let's try to understand what is an array in detail what are indexing how do you declare an array what is the syntax how do you initialize all those things so thanks for watching See you guys in the next one.